Hi there, my name is Sarah Dutson. I'm a registered nurse and I'm taking the hemodialysis course. Uh, the, it's called the Renal Replacement Therapies uh, Nursing Care in Hemodialysis. I'm, take, I'm doing our patient assessment um, assignment right now. So right now, um, our first patient, um, I'm meeting um, Miss Wilson today for the first time. She is um, a middle-aged lady who um, is a recent diabetic and she's just been on dialysis for a month now. Um, so, hi, Mrs. Wilson. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm Sarah, I'm gonna be your nurse today. How are you doing? Fine, except my, uh, I'm short of breath. You're short of breath, okay. Um, do you find that this is new for you or do you tend to have, be short of breath a lot? It's pretty normal. It's pretty normal for you, okay. Um, do you find you have anything else at all? I get thirsty a lot. Do you? Okay, I can tell. Um, Mrs. Wilson has, over here you can see, two big large glasses of ice there as well that she's brought with her. Um, so, some of our background data that I just kind of went over with you. Um, so, Mrs. Wilson um, has only started dialysis one month ago. So she still probably has a lot of questions to ask. She is also um, a diabetic. And as well, we found out um, before meeting her and looking through her chart that she has an arterial venous fistula access. So um, when, when I meet a new patient, I always um, talk with them and kind of see how they're doing, just a generic um, feel how they are. And uh, Mrs. Wilson, she has come up with a few little things um, to add to our story which is that she's feeling short of breath, and as well that she is saying that she is always thirsty. So those are two um, big markers that I am kind of, kind of um, dive into a bit more. So um, again, I'll introduce myself, uh, make sure she's comfortable. Um, even though she's been here for a month, I just make sure she doesn't have any more questions um, before I proceed. Um, I think Mrs. Wilson's okay right now. So I'm gonna just start with my pre-dialysis assessment. So I'm gonna be putting on like a blood pressure, um, which does her pulse as well. I'm gonna be getting a temperature as well, um, as well as her respiratory rate. I'm gonna be checking for swelling. So this is gonna be, I'm gonna be checking for like um, facial edema, um, swelling in her limbs, her abdomen, um, and her lower legs. Um, so right now I can see that um, her upper body seems to be okay, but you can kind of tell, maybe Mrs. Wilson can, that she has quite a bit of pitting edema in her lower legs. Um, so again, and then I'm gonna do my, um, I'm gonna be listening as well to her. So Mrs. Wilson, would you be able to lift forward for me just so I can have a listen to your lungs? Great. Thank you. So I can tell that um, by listening that she has some crackles in the bases of her lungs. Um, so again, this is um, usually indicative that she has some fluid overload. Um, Mrs. Wilson has also weighed in pre and is giving me her pre-dialysis weight um, just so we can um, examine how much fluid needs to be removed. So this is our objective data. So we can tell that um, Mrs. Wilson's blood pressure is high. Um, so I don't know um, if this is totally just fluid overloaded related. Maybe there's also some medication um, non-compliance as well that I'm gonna have to look into. Her pulse rate's on the higher end of normal. Her temperature seems to be normal, but her respiratory rate is high. So that is definitely um, a concern that she is short of breath and that she's really working to breathe. I've also noted that she is, has lower leg edema um, as well, her weight today was 84 kilograms. Looking back at all of her uh, blood work data, her URR rate has been 55 to 60%. Um, this is something to keep in mind as well, that um, it should be higher than this. Um, just she is a newer start, so maybe this is something that will ramp up. However, this is something that nephrologist should be um, looking into because maybe her time needs to be increased her dialysis flow needs to be increased and so forth. Um, as well, um, when I've been talking with Mrs. Wilson, she says, um, and I've looked back in her past treatments, she's been removing only 
um, liters each, um, each treatment, um, but she doesn't always get to her ideal weight. So that I'll be discussing with her as well. And as well, I have listened to her lungs and I have noticed that she has crackles um, at both bases. So as well, I'm gonna be um, looking up the patient prescription that the nephrologist has set up. So the nephrologist has asked that we use the Revamax 400 dialyzer. The ideal weight that the doctor has prescribed is 80 kilograms. The uh, they want a 3K bath with 1.25 calcium. Mrs. Wilson is coming for um, three hours, three times a week. The sodium is 140. Um, the dialysis flow rate is 500. The machine temperature is set at 36. I'm going to be doing a direct connection. And as well, her heparin is going to be um, the bolus rate of uh, 2,500 and the continuous rate of 1,000. And we know that she has an arterial um, fistula, arterial venous fistula, sorry. And um, so we need to have a shutoff rate of 60 minutes so um, we don't have her bleeding extenuously at the end. So we're going to be now looking at what am I going to be trying to take off? So the ideal or the, um, her weight that she came in at is 84 kilograms. So I'm going to be taking off minusing the ideal weight that the doctor, the nephrologist has prescribed. This is equaling four liters of, to come off. However, I need to calculate as well in there that we're adding in 0.4 and for that's the on and off. The on and off is just meaning like what's been primed, the saline, because we need to prime the machine before um, blood is entered into it. So I have to account for the saline that's pushed back to her. And as well, her intake as well is um, 0.4, and that's probably, um, and he should be maybe adding a little bit more because we have quite a bit of uh, fluid there. Um, however, but even that just all comes to 4.8. So again, we know that she's only been doing 2.5, so I'm going to be um, asking Mrs. Wilson, since she's been feeling pretty well with just removing the 2.5, that maybe we could take off a bit more. Maybe we could take off the 3 to maybe even 3.5 liters this time, um, provided that um, with unit policies, we're not going over the UFR rate, um, which is 1.5 during dialysis. Um, and as well, again, this all the things are pointing out to that she is fluid overloaded. She is short of breath, she has edema, and she is over her ideal weight. Um, and again, the um, vital signs as well um, with her respiratory rate and her um, uh, blood pressure as well indicate that, that she's fluid overloaded. So now I'm going to be just checking for her um, the fistula. So she has a radial cephalic fistula here. Um, so when I'm checking this, um, I'm checking where the astomosis is, which is down here. And you can see she has a nice straight graph, or a nice straight fistula, sorry. So what I do is I'm gonna palpate it, and I'm just feeling for the thrill. And I can feel the buzzing feel there, which feels really good. Um, I'm also gonna have a listen with my stethoscope. And what I'm listening is I'm listening for the brewery. Um, so this is again, official is when an artery and a vein are connected surgically by um, a surgeon. Um, so it's gonna take on the arterial um, beat there as well. Um, and it feels really good and listens, I can hear it very well. Um, but I'm also looking for, is there any extra swelling? Is there bruising? Um, are there any hard parts to um, the fistula at all? Um, and then I'm also going to see if it feels warm or feels normal, like doesn't feel overly warm. And I'm going to also ask Mrs. Wilson if I can look at her other arm just to compare, just to make sure that there isn't any extra swelling or like anything like that. And as well, I want to make sure that there's no open areas as well where infection could occur. Um, and Mrs. Wilson says there's no problems as well with circulation. Um, she doesn't have cold hands, no pain, anything like that as well. So our plan for Mrs. Wilson, um, um, try to remove the 2.5 at least. However, I feel like we're gonna try a little bit more. 
today, I think at least three, maybe even 3.5. Um, and I'm gonna make sure Mrs. Wilson is comfortable with that. I'll also inform Mrs. Wilson of, um, to let me know if um, she's starting to fit cramping at all, or, and I'm gonna be checking her blood pressure to make sure it doesn't drop too much with taking off more fluid than we had before. Um, I'm gonna ask the nephrologist maybe if we could have like an extra treatment put in, um, if we can't get this fluid really down, um, or to even assess her ideal weight, maybe it needs to be um, increased. Um, and then um, I'm also gonna see if, uh, maybe we can have just a UF as well treatment. So sometimes that's like um, 30 minutes pre, you just take off fluid only, not dialyzing. Um, I'm also gonna be teaching Mrs. Wilson about uh, fluid overload. Just because she's newer to um, dialysis, she might not really be informed or has forgotten because there's a lot to know at the beginning of um, uh, being a dialysis patient that um, you can only really have one liter a day of fluid. So maybe Mrs. Wilson isn't very compliant and has been drinking a lot more. And you can kind of see she even brought just two big glasses of water with her today. Um, so post dialysis as well. I'm going to be um, checking that swelling, see if it has gone down a little bit. I'm going to be checking her lungs again just to see if um, some of the crackles have cleared up. And then I'm also just going to confirm that she's feeling okay, that um, she wasn't cramping or um, got nauseous or anything like that. Um, I'm also going to put in for a consult to the dietitian because Mrs. Wilson is a diabetic. Um, I want to make sure that her um, diabetes is well taken care of. She is indicating that she's very thirsty as well, which can be an issue um, with diabetics, that maybe her sugars are um, too high. Um, I'm also gonna, um, the dietitian, dietitian can also talk about some fluid management ideas at home too. Um, I'm also gonna then consult at the end as well, our nephrologist um, and pharmacist, um, just to go over to make sure that um, there is medication um, compliance as well. Um, again, because maybe um, they aren't aware of her hypertension. So some other um, areas of education, um, I'm going to be asking again about medication compliance in general. So a good way to do this is ask Mrs. Wilson if she can bring in some, um, her list of her medications or even the bottles would be great for evaluating. Um, and I'm going to be making sure she is taking her medications as prescribed. And then again, I'm going to consult the nephrologist if needed. I'm going to be diving more into her diabetes. I just want to make sure that she's managing it well. Um, is she, does she live alone? Is she the only one who takes care of her diabetes? Does she have a lot of highs? Does she have a lot of lows? Been um, um, to emerge before? I'm also going to talk and ask for the dietitian as well to be consulted. And then again, I, um, which I've stated before, just fluid management, um, that she only has like a liter a day. Um, and then talk to her about what um, fluid overload it feels like. So the short of breath, the edema, are all linked to um, being fluid overloaded. So again, before I would hook her up, I just wanted to confirm I have my right dialyzer, my right bath, the right bicarb, my settings for machines are all set. There's nothing wrong looking with the, um, it's been primed nicely, no bubbles, everything looks good. So I would go on and um, with my ultrasound needle, um, Mrs. Wilson's fistula with the prescribed um, needle size right now and everything hopefully would go well. And again, I would ask Mrs. Wilson just to keep asking questions throughout so she's comfortable. Thank you very much. And that is a pre-dialysis assessment.